Hey guys, Shurim here, and today I'm going to be testing the ATS Automobili Corsa RR Turbo in multiplayer in Asphalt 9 at Golden Max in the Italian Season 1. This car recently had an Unleashed event in which I two-starred it but did not unlock it because a lot of the tokens I was spending at the time I was using in the 599XX Evo Car Hunt because I really wanted that car ever since it first came out and that was the one Ferrari car that I wished I had gotten that I didn't get, and now I have it, so I'll be making a video about that soon as well. But I was just not really impressed impressed at all with this car's performance at stock, and thankfully I can say that from stock to max it does get a lot better. Now it's not going to be king of its class, but it's actually probably going to be a halfway decent multiplayer car. Its acceleration is definitely its biggest selling point, as its top speed is nothing special. Its nitro efficiency is not very good, one of the worst in the game actually. And the handling and drifting are what are the really interesting parts, because at stock the drifting on the this car is absolutely horrendous. However, when it is at four stars, it's pretty good. I mean, it's just nothing special really at this point. You wouldn't suspect that this car at stock had a really bad drifting radius, but it did and now it doesn't. It's one of those cars that it really improves upon. So part of me wishes that I had gone for this car after all, but I'm pretty happy with that other Ferrari. So we come to the end of this race here with nobody else really on the map. So you might think, well, they were probably just not that great of cars. Now they were all Max Pagani Amolas. <laughs> <laughs> had no idea how that happened after that race, but then I realized, wait a second, that was my first race in the season. Of course, everybody is going to be trying out that car, which is pretty much the flagship car of the season, and I plan to test that in multiplayer as well. Also, I'm probably going to be testing the 599XX, but not in this season. I'm going to test it in the normal multiplayer season. I have, for some reason, always gotten this car mixed up with a Lotus. I even called it a Lotus at the beginning of my stream last weekend, just because that's the first thing I thought of when I saw it before I read the name. I thought it was a Lotus. I mean, I can't be the only one who sees the similarities, right? It's got that smiling grill and headlights up front. It's got these little lights in the back. It basically just looks like an Elise with the big wing on it, at least to me. Anyway, I actually ended up quite enjoying driving this car, which I was definitely not expecting to. When I went into the season, I saw this car as the first one. I was like, I have to make a video about this, don't I? But it's gonna be so painful to drive. Nah, it, it really wasn't. It's quite fun once you start up, I must say, and so if you were thinking about going for this car, well, the Unleashed event is already passed now, so I can't really give you advice on whether to go for it or not. But I guess for future reference, if you decided not to go for it because it wasn't very good at stock, and only for that reason, you might want to go for it again later whenever it comes back, probably in six months to a year, which I'd say is the usual turnaround time for a car like this that just wasn't very amazing, I guess, to begin with. Now, the cars that are kings obviously have much longer turnaround times, but cars like this, you might expect to see it within a year or so again to come back in some form or shape. But if you got it, definitely give it a shot in multiplayer, and if you didn't get it, definitely give it a shot in this multiplayer season. The acceleration is quite fun, I must say. At the beginning of races, being able to shoot past everybody is just always fun, no matter what car you're in. I tell you, one day, we'll get a car that has a 100 on acceleration. I can almost guarantee guarantee it. We'll probably also get a car that has 100 on nitro efficiency, I and mean, we've already seen with the McLaren Senna we can get a car with 100 on handling, so I don't think those are too much out of the picture. I just think those would be hilarious cars, especially if they were super unbalanced, <laughs> like those stats were the best things about them and then everything else just wasn't particularly amazing. I don't know, I just think that would be so funny. So someone's catching up pretty quickly to me here at the end, he's actually an Aventador SV, which as you probably know goes faster than me by like 20 25 miles per hour or something like that. Most of the cars in this season are quite a bit faster than me. He tries to 360 me at the end. I have learned, after so much experience with that happening, just try to stay away from everybody as much as possible, especially toward the end of races. That's why at the end of the previous race, where I got barely beaten by that blue Huera, I stayed away from him at the end. I purposely stayed to the right so that he would not have the temptation nor the chance to knock me down if he so desired. Thankfully, he didn't, but right then it definitely came in handy. There have been some times though when I pretty much have been touching somebody who's 360'd and I have gotten knocked down, 
but that hasn't happened very often. Generally speaking, I get knocked down even when it doesn't seem like someone's touched me, so I guess that's kind of to make up for all those times. And there was one of the times where I was 316 and didn't knock somebody down. This race was just kind of crazy. I knew I had to put this one in the video. Here I accidentally 360 this guy in the air. That kind of reminds me of that time I accidentally knocked down that guy in the Tri Nemesis on my stream. Sorry about that. But yeah, this was at the very beginning of the season. I mean, I never really care much what happens to me when I'm in the first like two or three leagues generally so if someone knocks me down I don't I don't really care the points are a lot easier to gain back than later on so that's why especially if I'm streaming a lot of people have wondered how I keep my cool when I'm streaming well a lot of times the season I'm playing I'm either not very high in it or I just don't care a lot about my rating in it and I know I can get it back later so that's how I can keep cool here we beat three Amolas and four Tributos but you will notice they were not too far behind me and it was still a very close match so that is why that whenever I test a car in a season like this that is quite low ranked I always do it in some of my first races in the season because generally speaking the players that I'm going to be running up against are going to be in much higher ranked cars just because if you can play in anything and the cars are not regulated based on what the league is that you're in people are going to generally just gravitate toward the higher end cars especially if there are a lot of them and they don't have to worry too much about fuel. And as you go up in the leagues in a season like this, you'll still run up against the same really high-end cars, but the people driving them are going to be quite skilled, and there's no way that me in a 208 mile per hour car is going to be beating a bunch of skilled players in 244 miles per hour Emolas. So that's why I generally test cars like this pretty low, and there have been some times where it hasn't even worked out like that at all. There was one season recently that was similar to this one, where everything was just max proed, where I got a chance to drive a maxed out... Uh, did I just say max proed? Got asked to on the brain, I guess. <laughs> I mean, uh, maxed cars. I had a chance to drive a max came in which I wanted to do and I did problem was everybody else was in I don't remember whatever the top cars were in that season I could not win anything. I couldn't even get podium positions in anything. Everything else was just so much faster. So that's why I guess my favorite kind of season like this would be one where you do have a lot of different cars that you can test, but hopefully they'll be closer to each other overall in terms of performance, especially if they're not regulated based on the league that you're in, so that people who do choose to drive these slower cars won't get absolutely demolished by the higher end cars especially if you are in lower leagues. And now it is time for my general review about this car. As you've seen throughout the video, it actually ends up handling pretty well when you have it at max. Its nitro efficiency is not very good at all, so you have to keep that in mind. But the good thing about it is the acceleration is so good, and the top speed isn't even that high anyway, such that you're really not going to have to worry about the poor nitro efficiency much at all. I mean, you're pretty much still going to be able to get up to your top speed around corners without much of a problem, Assuming you've saved up for Shockwave, because that acceleration will get you back up to top speed in no time at all. So the car that is just past me is a Tributo, and there are two of them in the race. The other one is coming up behind me right now. He's catching up fast, as the guy ahead of me is slowing down quite a lot, and on one of these turns with a 360, I knock him down, as well as passing the other guy. So I end up coming in first place, a very surprising victory to be sure. So guys, thank you all so much for watching. Please like the video if you've enjoyed, and consider subscribing for more Asphalt and other games content, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.